that Swami Vivekananda very aptly called it, Purva Mimamsa as the science of action. That is the name he gave to it. And uh, it is a wonderful way of looking at that Shastra. But unfortunately, there is no bhava in that Shastra, only Kriya. And then, my aim is not to pinch a, punch a hole in the Shastra, that is not my aim, that is the observation, casual observation. But then we come to Vedanta, Uttara Mimamsa, where some Kriya is always there. As long as a person is alive, there is life in this body, there will be action. The action comes to an end only when the, when the person breathes his last. Till then there will be action. But then uh, the focus is not on the action. Action is uh, secondary. Till you realize your Swarupa. And the action is uh, inconsequential once you know your Swarupa. Because in your Swarupa there is no action. All action is in Prakriti, none in Purusha. Therefore, here the action is secondary and uh, the entire focus is on Bhava. I purposefully use the word Bhava instead of Jnana because the word Jnana is a, a very loose term which is used uh, in many contexts. Like Ayam Ghataha is also a jnana. <laughs> to that extent that the word is used everywhere, all cognitions fall under the category of jnana. Therefore, I am not against the word jnana. In fact, I request you to, I appeal to you, I am not against anything. <laughs> like Enabu Virothaha, Avirodhan Nibodhata, like Enabu Virothaha. I may say a few things about jnana that doesn't construe, you should not construe that. As if I am opposed to Jnana. I am not opposed to Jnana. Nor am I opposed to Kriya. I am not opposed to anything. Just watch and make an observation. That is not opposition. Opposition is a different movement of the mind. Anyway, Bhava. You see, Bhava is feeling. Viveka Bhavaha, Sarvatma Bhavaha. The word Bhava, Bhashyakara uses it. And Apravatten, uh, Apravatten, and So there in the Mudapa Upanishad, Bhajanara uses the word Bhava. Also, Moksha is presented by Bhajanara as a Sarvatma Bhavaha, not Sarvatma Jnana. He could have said Sarvatma Jnana, which conveys the same meaning. We are willing to understand it in the right spirit. But he said Sarvatma Bhavaha. So these two are there, Viveka Bhavaha, the feeling. You see, the feeling is very important. You see, I was watching a squid uh, moving around very busily and it has a, a very bushy tail and a beautiful fur and it went up the trunk of a tree hastily as if it is in a big hurry. And then uh, it uh, crawled across a branch of the tree and uh, I, I suppose it picked up some nut or whatever and it was busily breaking up and uh, munching that uh, nut and suddenly it left it and came down with the equal speed. So when I saw that, I felt that is life, there is life in that moment. Whereas, we miss that life in our lives. We don't have that life in our lives. Maybe because uh, we don't have any feeling left in us. <laughs> so, you and I cannot know the joy if we do not feel things deeply. And uh, did you notice how few of us feel ardently and deeply about anything for that matter. So, ardent feeling about something is a very curious thing it is. And it brings a new order into life. 
You see, I would uh, not hesitate to say we do not have deep feeling about anything because most of us are intellectuals. In the very superficial sense of uh, being very clever, and uh, we are full of words and theories, words and more words. The word is not the thing. Never. Word is never the thing. And uh, that distinction uh, we have to emphasize. Uh, because uh, we use the terminology and uh, end up believing that we know the Shastra, we know the Vastu, etc. And uh, because we, 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 we repeat the terminology again and again and again in a very orderly, scholarly, intellectual way, and uh, there is no feeling to back up all that terminology, all that will be age. There is no feeling in us to back it up. And therefore, in our hands, Vedanta becomes a system at best, a structure, superficial structure, an outward structure, a methodology, a prakriya, something that you handle and deal with and uh, add something to it, take out something to it and uh, show your uh, skill in handling. So it becomes a prakriya. All of it without any bhava. And therefore Vedanta becomes, in fact I would suggest it uh, comes down to the level of a religious sect. To that level. A person in the street, an ignorant person, an illiterate person, man or a woman, worships uh, some silly image uh, or uh, idol, whereas we worship very sophisticated images. We put a Shankara Jaya and do a Visheka. Whereas an illiterate woman, puts a Maisamma, Maridamma, Kattamma and puts uh, some silly flower on that. I see no difference between the two. They are not two different things and there is no reason for us to be proud of what we are doing or what we generally tend to do. Tend to do. Because we do not have the deep feeling about, it, about anything. We are merely intellectuals in the very superficial sense. Mentally, we are highly developed, but in worldly, there is very little feeling in our lives. You see, you may be very clever, immensely clever, have encyclopedic knowledge, but if there is not the vitality of strong and deep feeling, your comprehension or your scholarship is like a flower without perfume. So the bhava is very important. Having said that, viveka bhavaha, first I have emphasized the importance of bhava. Now I will uh, compare and contrast the two bhavas, viveka bhava versus sarvatma bhava. Viveka bhavaha sadhana pakshaha, sarvatma bhava siddha paksha. This main distinction we have to keep in mind. In the Shastra, we come across statements that highlight Sarvatma Bhava, like Atmava Idamam Sarvam, Idam Sarvam Yat Ayam Atma, Yastu Sarvan Bhutan, Atman Neva Anupashyati, Tiyatasya Komovak Kashokaha, Ekatva Mopashyataha, Ityadi uh, statements that highlight Sarvatma Bhava. What is Sarvatma Bhava? All is one. I am that one. That is Sarvatma Bhava. Pratyaka Bhinna Brahma Jnana. That is the Brahma Jnana. Brahma Jnana is not Abhinna Jagat Jagataha Yad Abhinna Nimi Abhinna Nimi Tomadana Karanam Tasya Tasya Jnana. Nah. That becomes very incomplete. Pratyaka Bhinna 
Brahma Vicharaha. That is the Brahma Vijnasa. That is the Sarvatma Bhava. I am all that is. That is the Sarvatma Bhava. That is not the Sadhana Paksha. You don't start the journey with that. I am not suggesting you should not even utter that uh, statement. I am not suggesting anything of that kind. You are welcome to say all those statements. Atmavayam Sarvam. That is a wonderful thing it is to say. But in your, uh, when I say you, it is not these few people who are sitting here, that is the style of speaking. In our uh, over enthusiasm for uh, Sarvatma Bhava, we neglect the Viveka Bhava. You see, Viveka is as you and I sit or stand here, no one here, no one here. You see, Vedanta is about no one here. The moment uh, you, you miss the no one here part of it, it, becomes, it uh, comes down to the level of religion. Because religion is credit, Vedanta is cash. That is the basic distinction between the two. No one here. Uh, anything no one here only you talk that has some value. If it is not no one here, it is not Vedanta. So uh, that's why in Vedanta Jivan Mukti is the most important thing. And the Dvaitis, they don't accept the Jivan Mukti for uh, obvious reasons. Anyway, so no one here, as you and I sit or stand here, no one here. You let us look at us. See, you have to start with ourselves. You cannot start with Brahma, Jagampa, Jagadaha, Upadana. You cannot start there. You have to start with yourself. If you start with Brahma, Jagadaha, Upadana, you become intellectual. You start with yourself. You see, there is a law, the law of Vedanta, which says you start near, you go far. You start far, you go nowhere. <laughs> So you have to start with yourself. So as you and I sit here, when, when I look at myself, for example, I am demonstrating, when I look at myself, there is the physical dimension. Dehaha, it is there. When I, when I say I am, I am is the expression of a deeply felt experience in Anubhava. And the Anubhava is expressed in a statement as Ahamasmi. And uh, therefore, Ahamasmi is, a, is an expression of an Anubhava. It is. It, it is not a thought. Thought comes later. First, I am. I am is the primordial thought, if you say so, if you will. So, Ahamasmi, that is the Anubhava. In that Ahamasmi Anubhava, in that uh, experience, or in that feeling, if you will, there is the physical dimension. The body is there. I feel the body as part and parcel of Ahamasmi. And then uh, there is the mind. The mind is the locus of pleasure and pain. Life is not kind to anybody. There is pleasure in the life and there is an equal measure of pain, if not more. And uh, the locus of the pleasure and pain is mind. And uh, when I say Ahamasmi, that includes the psychological dimension of uh, of the mind. That, that is the that is the second dimension. That Ahamasmi includes the psychological dimension. Normally, a, a person in the street, a common man, his understanding ends there. So anybody believes or takes himself to be the physical and the psychological dimensions put together. That is all. A common man is unaware of a deeper dimension, what I would like to call the spiritual dimension. Please bear with my terminology. Don't, don't, uh, uh, don't uh, I mean, uh, uh, contest or don't grudge me for my terminology. Don't go by terminology. Terminology is meant for conveying the message. It has no other sense. Just because you use a particular body, you don't become a jnana. And that because I use it, I don't become an adjan. So, therefore, this is the way I would like to express it. Under the third dimension, that the deeper dimension, when I say deeper, I don't mean physically deeper, obviously. 
And uh, these are all metaphorical expressions. I, I may even call it higher dimension. I don't mean it is a sitting above. A deeper dimension means it is able to dive deeper in such thing. That is how the expressions are. That is how we convey. And uh, so, this third dimension, the deeper dimension, this, which I call the spiritual dimension, that dimension, uh, the common man is unaware. And uh, a student of Vedanta, is he aware of that dimension? Is he aware? So the spiritual dimension, you know, I, I would put it, that spiritual dimension in very simple words, I am the one who knows. Who, uh, you, uh, then, uh, then comes the Viveka Bhava. Bhava is feeling. The feeling of discrimination or discernment. You see, I feel now and here that I am not the body. I feel it. It is not uh, some intellectual exercise. No. It is Idam Shadiram. This body which is disintegrating even now, that's why it is called the Sharira. I am not this body. Uh, so, when were you born, sir? I was never born and I am not going to die. Mm -hmm. I do not feel anything on behalf of the body. I do not feel it. Suppose you feel on behalf of the body, fire upon you, because you are not a student of Vedanta. And then Manaha, this is more difficult. I am not talking about you, I am just saying that is my normal way of expressing. So manaha, it is more difficult. It is easy to discern the body. It is very easy with a little abhyasa. Abhyasa doesn't mean dumbbells. <laughs> so taking the right spirit, with a little abhyasa, you can overcome the body identification easily. Only you have to stop this namarupa business. All the time going after the Namarupa and as if that is the uh, summum and bonum of all. You have to give up this Namarupa and uh, rise above the Namarupa. Then uh, you will start feeling that feeling of non identification with the physical body will be with you. Then the more difficult part of it is Sukhamukha, that the locus of Sukhamukha, that is the mind. Sukhamma dukhamma manasi vartate, natumayi. It is not in me, not of me. It is in the mind. There, by constant uh, study and reflection, whatever name you give to it, Shravana Maradam Dhyasana, you create that inner space with reference to the mind. Here is the mind. Sukha Dukha happens in the mind. Sometimes things are very favorable and therefore there is a sense of joy, cheer in the mind. Sometimes it is the opposite. Now, prahushya priyam prapya, not vige prapya cha priyam, sthira buddhi rasam muthaha, brahmani brahmani sthitaha. What is brahma? Brahma is myself. Not the physical or psychological dimensions. That viveka is the most important thing. So, I do not identify with the mind. And uh, I maintain that inner space, that, uh, that the most critical inner space with reference to the mind, the discernment with reference to the mind, that I maintain. I am not the mind. I do not know myself in terms of the body-mind. I do not call myself Aham Brahmanaha, because Brahmana is a, a mental form, it is not a physical form. I am a human, I am a, I am a two-legged animal, vipat, that is the physical form. Brahmana, Vaishya, etc. is the mental form. It is a thought pattern inherited from the society, from the family, from the culture and religion. I am not going to identify with it. That doesn't mean I am against Brahmana. I am not against anything. Please note that, avirodhan nivodhata. I am not against anything. I am just examining the discrimination part of it and therefore I, I do not uh, take myself to be what the body and the mind suggest. The body suggests you are tall, I, I am not tall. The body suggests you are famish, I am Krishahana. The body suggests that you are very hefty, I am Stonahana. 
or not any whatever the body suggests. The mind always suggests that you are the unfortunate person. <laughs> In this world, the mind suggests to every one of them, all the seven billion people, the mind suggests that you are abhag, abhagaha, or abhagi. Mind suggests that you are an unfortunate guy. And everybody believes that I am unfortunate. To the extent that they make prayers. So, Tamakne, Mamakne, Bhaginan Guru. So, you make my enemy a bhati and me bhati. That kind of a prayer. So, I don't get it readily to the mind. Therefore, so whatever the mind, mind suggests, Aham Sukhi. No. Aham Sukhi, no. Not Aham Dukhi. That doesn't mean Aham Dukhi, no. Aham Na Sukhi, Aham Na Dukhi. I am not anything that the mind suggests. Then who are you? I am the one who knows. I am the one who knows. Hiram Shariram Kaute Kshetra Vitya Vidhi Yate Etat Yo Vete Tam Prahu Kshetra Vidya Vidya Tam Vidaha. This is the Mahamantra. This is the uh, substance of Vivek of Hava. I am the one who knows. Who knows what? Knows anything and everything. The entire universe comes to light in my consciousness. I am the one who knows the world. The world is because I know it. If I don't know, the world doesn't exist. Vedantins do not accept existence outside knowledge. Jnana, Jnanam Vina, Satta, Vedanti Bhihi Nasviki. That is Naya Ikasana Vatara, Dvaitina. Sat is different from Chit, that is Dvaitina. Sat is Chit, that is Advaita. And therefore, I am the one who knows. I am the one who knows the body. I am not the body. I am the one who knows the mind. I am not the mind. This Viveka Bhava, this is the Sadhana Pakshaha. Now, now I come to the contrast between the two. We ignore this Viveka Bhava. We are badly caught in the names and forms. We badly identify with the body. We are unable to give up one small appellation, one small identification, aham brahmanaha, aham vaishyaha, whatever, we are unable to give up any one of those things. We say we are sannyasis, we give up everything. We do not give up anything. We keep every single identification. We don't give up anything. Sarva sankalpa sannyasa iti sannyasi. So we don't give up anything. And uh, so we don't pay attention to Viveka Bhava. Some of you may not like what I am saying, but I am saying what I am saying. I am not presenting a paper. I am supposed to talk and I am talking. And uh, so um, we, are, we do not pay attention. We are uh, very boisterously declare all is Brahman. By neglecting the Viveka Bhava and by helping upon the Sarvatma Bhava, we become people of contradictions, if not outright hypocrites. You see, on one side we are engaging in all kinds of fragmentary thinking. Fragmentary thinking, one, he, he is a Vaishya, I am a Brahmana. He is a South Indian, I am a North Indian. He is a Punjabi, I am a Madrasi. He is a non, uh, he is a Westerner, I am a Indian. He is a Vlecha, I am Brahmana. And then uh, uh, he is a Christian and I am a Hindu. Every kind of fragmentary thinking that is there in the book, we practice it. We identify with it. And at the same time, from the podium, we say, Sarvam Kalpitam Brahma. When Brahmachari is a cooking upma, he is preparing upma. And the Mahatma walked in and asked, what are you doing? He said that, I am cooking Brahma. <laughs> this is the ridiculous level to which we bring the, the Sarvatma Bhava down. I suggest, stop this Sarvatma. You say, uh, all is Ishvara. What do you mean by all is Ishvara? In the same breath, all is Ishvara. Are, take care of him, he is not a good guy. 
He is not a for religion. He is not a for sampradaya. What do you mean by sampradaya? Sampradaya is the frozen thought and you identify with it. Parampara. Parampara is what? The sequence of names you have. All names only. Amarupa. Nothing but a name. And uh, apparently a set of uh, thoughts, a bunch of thoughts are associated with this uh, sequence of names. And you call it as a parampara and you identify with it. When uh, there are so many identifications and you are not willing to give up any single identification. That means you just do not have any psychological freedom even to think, to examine. And uh, so we engage in every kind of fragmentary thinking. So like Punjabi, Madrasi, etc. All kinds of fragmentary thinking. We, th we think in terms of religious sects and all that and we divide humanity into every possible fragment and now we think like that and now we practice like that and at the same time we talk all is Ishwara. This is a contradiction if not hypocrisy. Contradiction is that is done unintentionally. Hypocrisy is that is practiced intentionally. That is the only difference. Therefore, without paying attention to Viveka Bhava, talking of all is one, I'm not against all is one, okay, I'm not against it. That is a, a vision that I love the most. And uh, what I am suggesting is the students of Vedanta, they should focus on Sadhana Paksha and mature into Siddha Paksha. I am not talking of a time-bound process. Focus on Sadhana Paksha, the maturity into Siddha Paksha will happen automatically. You see, Brahma is not something that you visualize through certain theories and formulae and sloka verses and all that. You know what is Brahma? Brahma is, you look at yourself, is identify perseveringly with the body-mind and when you do so, the I amness which has become a person of the body in terms of space. When you say identify with the body, the ayamness gets identified with the space. It acquires a special limitation when you say I am the body. You may not say I am the body, but deha dharma dhyasa, not deha dhyasa per se. It just amounts to the same. And then when you identify with the mind, you acquire the limitations of time because body is a space, mind is time. And so deshakala paricheta, you put in ayamness. So now you practice Viveka Bhava and avoid or cut asunder the Desha Parichyata and Kala Parichyata and then as to the infinite which is embedded in the finite body mind gets liberated, becomes free. The ayamness becomes free. That ayamness which is apparently bound in space-time limitations because of the body mind identification it blossoms into Brahma. Brahma is that which is the outcome of the blossoming of the Ayamnas. The Ayamnas loses all its limitations and blooms into the Brahman. And that Brahman is the existence absolute which includes all that exists, including the body mind. Therefore, it is a process of negation, not rejection. So all those uh, technical details one has to work out. Therefore, the students of Vedanta should focus on Viveka Bhava. For them, the student, for him, he is the body mind and Guru is another body mind and God is a third body mind. What kind of Vedanta it is? And uh, therefore, focus on Viveka Bhava. Of course, Sarvatma Bhava is there to inspire us Yes, to Sarvana Bhutani Ityadi. Ultimately, Aham Manura Bhavam Suryashtya. I am, I am the teacher and I am the taught. The same reality is speaking from here and listening from there. I am all. I am the beggar in the street. I am the sun in the sky and I am the moon. And I am all. I am the young man who is whispering to the young lady. And I am the fire in the planets and the fire in the stars. 
and I am the depths of the ocean, I am all. That is the Siddhartha. You don't stop there. You, you talk of that and uh, neglect or work against the Sarvabhivaka Bhava. Therefore, as the students of Vedanta, it is our primary duty or effort to focus on Viveka Bhava and bloom into or blossom into Sarvatma Bhava, which is same as Brahmatma Bhava, and be liberated here and now. These are some of the thoughts that were moving in my mind when Srimati Swatma uh, Atma Vidyananda asked me to speak a few words. And I thank you for the courtesy of your attention. Hari Om.